How to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. In ministering, never follow the path your mind wants to take. Don't lean to your own understanding. Learn to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit within you. He is there inside you to lead you. I remember when I first started in the ministry. I had been preaching for about two years in various churches, usually ones in which no one else would preach. Then one day the Lord spoke to me to get out of those churches and to start holding some meetings of my own. I prayed about it, and the Lord led me to Wichita Falls, Texas. I rented an old abandoned drugstore building and some folding chairs. Can I have your attention for a few seconds? Before we delve deep into this video, please help us spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ by supporting our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash You will instantly gain access to over 180 Christian videos and over 400 videos about billionaire biographies and over 140 personal development videos and over 450 verse and quotes images among other goodies. If you are watching this video, and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior I'll help you do that right now, because it is for this very purpose that we create these videos. Giving your life to the Lord is the best decision you can ever make in your entire life on earth. I invite you to make Jesus your Lord today. In Romans 10 verse 9 the Bible says that, If thou confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Please, pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died on the cross, and that on the third day God raised him from the dead. I believe that Jesus is the Lord of my life from this day onward. I'm now born again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well done for making this prayer. You are now born again. Attend a Bible-based church and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and support us on Patreon to keep learning the truth of God's word as you become an excellent Christian every day. Our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash link is also in the description. Let's continue with our today's topic. On one particular Wednesday night, I remember that the anointing was really strong. I preached on the reality of the righteousness of God. It was going great, and I was having the time of my life. But just as I built my sermon up to its climatic moment and God was just coming forth with a finish, a woman in the audience suddenly burst forth in tongues. I felt like someone had stood up and doused me with a fire hose. I said, lady, hold that. She just kept on. Again, lady, hold that until I finish. She got a little louder. I shouted, in the name of Jesus, shut up. She grew louder still. By this time the service was in shambles. I finally just stood back and let her go on and on and on. It seemed to me that she went on for an hour and a half. Then she shifted over into English. Yea, yea, saith the Lord, she never said anything intelligible. This continued on for what seemed like an eternity. After a while, everyone was squirming around in their seats. They looked like they were about ready to wring her neck. Finally, when she hushed, I looked right at her, and I said sternly, Well, we've already lost what we were studying anyway, so I am going to teach you something. You wouldn't have had the nerve to interrupt me in English while I was preaching, so why would you do it in a language you don't understand? About that time, a man sitting next to her spoke up and said, Brother Ko, she is stone deaf. She didn't hear a word you said. What do you do faced with a situation like that? Whatever you say, can and will be held against you. What is there to say anyway? I found out later that someone had planned the whole thing. They had already run half a dozen preachers out of town with the same trip. She was being used by some very selfish people. It was set up that, when the man next to her punched her with his elbow, it was her turn to prophecy. During times like these, your decision to meet the needs of the people, must rise to the surface. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would lead us into all truth, and that his sheep would know his voice. I was determined, that no demonic spirit would run me out of town. It was so heavy in there, so quiet. Everybody was just waiting to see what I would do. I just closed my eyes and inside my own consciousness I said, Lord, you will have to show me what to do. I am not going to make a move until you tell me what I am to do. The answer came to me. It was so simple that my carnal mind would never have thought of it. I would not have even acted on it if I had thought of it. The Lord said, call her up and lay hands on her and I will open her ears. I said to the man next to her, sir, bring her up here. I am going to lay my hands on her and God will open her ears. He would not budge, so I called her up myself and laid hands on her, and God opened her ears. I finished my sermon on righteousness, and we had a marvelous time under the anointing of God. The meeting grew, and that old drugstore soon filled up. We had a wonderful time, and many received from God. If you are going to minister to people's needs, you will have to be led of the Holy Spirit, because more often than not you will find yourself in situations that only His wisdom can handle. Some years later, I was preaching in Fort Worth, Texas. There were about 2,000 people in attendance one evening. Among them, unknown to me, was a witch who had brought a human chalice with her. A human chalice is a person used by witches to receive and accumulate demonic spirits. You may encounter some of these people someday. 
They attend gospel meetings for the very purpose of gathering demonic spirits that are cast out of others. I realize that to many people the idea of witches and witchcraft may seem ridiculous. Unfortunately, however, these things do exist. We as ministers of Jesus Christ will have to contend with them, just as our Lord dealt with them. This witch sat across the aisle from the chalice and was using her to create a disturbance in that meeting. Every child in the place was crying. Everyone was restless and moving about. Unless a situation like that is controlled quickly, a whole service will be ruined. When these types of instances arise, you must also be prepared beforehand. Unless you have spent time in prayer, you will not be able to effectively deal with those situations. You can forget about being led of the Holy Spirit if you spend your preparation time tending to personal affairs, playing golf with influential people, making business appointments, and selling your tapes and records. Hire someone else who is anointed to handle those things. Spend your time in prayer and in the Word before a meeting. Otherwise, you will simply not be spiritually prepared to minister the Word and to overcome the obstacles which Satan will surely throw in your path. Don't ever substitute hard work for prayer. When this disturbance arose that evening, I asked the Lord, what should I do? He said, bind that disturbance. Many times it will not even be necessary for you to speak aloud, just under your breath, in the name of Jesus. In this particular case, and this is why you must listen to the Spirit of God, I was to bind the disturbance. So I said, you spirit of disturbance, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take complete and total authority over you now, and I cast you out of this place. Every child in that auditorium hushed. The whole audience became quiet and still. One of our ushers had spotted the chalice and had come and stood behind her without her being aware of his presence. He heard her whispering to the evil spirit, come on back, come on back. Finally, she became so upset she screamed, got up and ran out of the building. When that happened, the witch jumped up and ran out behind her. They fled so fast that they ran into my son in the lobby and knocked him down. Right at that moment my mind went totally and completely blank. I could not remember what I had been preaching. What do you do in a case like that? Thank God, I don't have to speak out of my mind. I just started preaching in tongues at the direction of the Holy Spirit. All the time the scripture kept running through me that says, Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 13. I had not spoken very long in tongues, before I changed over into English. I preached in English for about 40 minutes, and had no idea what I was saying. At the end of that time, it was just as though I had come right back to the place I had left off. Suddenly, I remembered the very last word I had spoken 40 minutes before. I took the next word, finished the sentence, kept right on preaching, and completed that sermon. We had one of the most anointed services that evening that we had ever had. Later on by listening to the cassette tape of that service, I discovered what I had said during the 40-minute interval, when I had spoken solely by the anointing of the Spirit. In order for you, as a minister, to be able to be led of God, you will have to be attuned to the Holy Spirit. You cannot lean to your own understanding. You must be totally grounded in and dependent upon the Word of God. You must let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, Colossians 3.16. How to find your place in the body of Christ. The Bible says that the callings of God are without repentance, Romans 11 verse 29. If you are called to be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher or to any other ministry in the body of Christ, the Lord will not revoke the assignment given to you. He ordained you before the foundation of the world. When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, it will be in the light of your calling, not what you did, nor what you meant to do, or wished you had done, but what God said you were appointed to do. This applies not only to the fivefold ministry, but to every member of Christ's body. Each believer is anointed and endued with power to fulfill a specific function. By the Spirit of God, every individual is able to perform their calling with mastery and excellence. So, it would be to your advantage to find your calling and get in it. You may have to change your thinking to find your place. If you have some unscriptural religious traditions, you will have to discard them. For example, 2 Timothy 2 verse 20 says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. Many who read that verse, or preach it, stop right there. They say, not everybody can have the kind of excellent ministry that people like Brother Ko have. Because in a great house there are some vessels to honor and some to dishonor. Some are vessels of gold, but some of us are required to be the earthen vessels. Nonsense. Satan will twist the very scriptures themselves in order to keep people bowed down and trying to please God on the basis of their feelings and false humility. If you don't believe that's hypocritical, just see how you react when someone else starts telling you how worthless you are. Just let your darling child come home from school one day and say, guess what the teacher told me today? That I am unworthy, no good and a worm. You would go to court over that. Yet many people tell God that very thing about themselves and call it humility, that's hypocrisy. Let's read on and finish the entire passage. Let's see what the Bible actually says about us. Verse 21. 
If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Meat is an old English word which means sable. Whether you become a gold pot, or a mud pot is not the master's decision, it is yours. Both are available. You can be a vessel of honor as a matter of choice. God has more respect for us than many of us give him credit for. Did you ever watch a master craftsman at his trade? How does he treat his tools? He is not negligent and careless. His tools are specially designed and tempered, full of strength and power, to do very specific tasks. As a skilled craftsman, he depends upon his instruments for his livelihood. He meticulously uses, cares for and maintains the tools of his trade. They are extensions of his creativity. He intends for them to last a lifetime, and to be handed down to his son after him. The tools of a man's trade take care of him, and he takes care of them. In the redemption of the human race, you and I are the tools of God's craft. Jesus is the Redeemer, but we are the bearers of good news. He is the vine, but we are the branches, that bear the fruit. He will care for us and sustain us. He will temper us. A wrench is not tempered, by beating it over an anvil. People have the mistaken idea, that to strengthen a believer God has to beat and harass him. No. It takes oil to temper steel. The oil of the Holy Spirit toughens and reinforces us. Our strength and power lie in the Word of God and His Spirit indwelling us. Can you please do us a favor? If you have been blessed by this video, please leave a comment, like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, and invite at least 200 plus souls, it could be family and friends, to visit Discofeth YouTube channel, so that they may hear the gospel of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and be born again. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and support us on Patreon, our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash link is also in the description. Thank you and God bless you.